This LOS is explained how the concepts of arbitrage, replication, and risk neutrality are used in pricing derivatives. Before we jump into this LOS, we're just going to do a bit of an introduction to the reading, which will cover not only this LOS, but some upcoming ones. So because derivatives take their prices from the price of the underlying, it is important to first understand how the underlying is priced. The purpose of this reading is to establish the foundations of derivative pricing on a basic conceptual level. The following topics are covered. One, how does the pricing of the underlying asset affect the pricing of derivatives? Two, how are derivatives priced using the principle of arbitrage? Three, how are the prices and values of forward contracts determined? Four, how are futures contracts priced differently from forward contracts? Five, how are the prices and values of swaps determined? Six, how are the prices and values of European options determined? And finally, seven, how does American option pricing differ from European option pricing? The slide has got some big picture information. Number one, the worlds of uh, forwards, futures, and swaps use different terminology with respect to price and value. These contracts do not require the outlay of cash at the start the way an option stock or bond does. Forwards, futures, and swaps start off with values of zero. To start off with a value of zero, we need to understand the concept of no arbitrage. The forward price is the spot price compounded at the risk-free rate over the life of the contract. The forward price of an asset with benefits and or costs is the spot price compounded at the risk-free rate over the life of the contract minus the future value of those benefits and costs. As the underlying moves, the derivative values become either positive or negative from that original price of zero. The value of a forward contract at expiration is the spot price of the underlying minus the forward price agreed to in the contract. So for each type of derivative contract, we need to understand the pricing and valuation at expiry date, the pricing and valuation at initiation date, the value equals zero, and the pricing and valuation during the life of the contract. So the chapter looks at forwards first, then forward rate agreements, in which the underlying interest rates, then compares uh, uh, forwards to futures, then looks at swaps, and then finally options. So continuing with the introduction, pricing means to assign a fixed price or rate at which the underlying will be bought by the long and sold by the short at expiration. In assigning a forward price, we set the price such that the value of the contract is zero at the start. A zero value contract means that the present value of the payments promised by each party to the other is the same, a result in keeping with the fact that neither party pays the other any money at the start, okay, because the value is zero. So the value of the contract to the long is the present value of the payments promised to the, uh, by the short to the long minus the present value of the payments promised by the long to the short. Although the value is zero at the start, during the life of the contract, the value will fluctuate as market, con uh, as market conditions change and the original forward contract price, however, stays the same. Okay, I've put a note here that this reading is the foundation for CFA level two, okay? Things get cranked up a notch when you get to the level two. So because the CFA program focuses on the asset management industry, our primary interest is in equity, interest rate, and fixed income and currency forwards. So the equity forwards, an equity forward is a contract calling for purchase of an individual stock, a stock portfolio, or a stock index at a later date. So there can be forward contracts on individual stocks, forward contracts on stock portfolios, forward contracts on stock indices, and you have to understand the effective dividends, okay? Then we also look at bond and interest rate forward contracts, Forward contracts on bonds are similar to forward contracts on interest rates, but the two are different instruments. Forward contracts on bonds, in fact, are no more difficult to understand than those on equities. Fixed income security prices are driven by interest rates. A more common type of forward contract is the interest rate forward contract, more commonly called a forward rate agreement, FRA. And finally, we'll look at uh, currency forward contracts, Currency forwards are widely used by banks and corporations to manage foreign exchange risk. So continuing now with the fundamental concepts of derivative pricing, we're going to look at the pricing of risky assets, okay? 
So the general form of asset valuation, we've got an, an equation here. Uh, the spot price equals the expected future price of the asset at time t. And uh, derivative contracts have finite lives, don't forget. Uh, R is the risk-free rate. And this uh, symbol is the risk premium for uncertainty about the spot. So you can see this is a present value. You know, present value equals future value divided by 1 plus R to the T, except that we're including in here a risk premium for uncertainty about the spot price. So the risk premium depends on investor risk aversion. An investor obtains the current price S0 by discounting the expected future price of the asset with no interim cash flows. So this is the expected uh, spot price at time T by the risk-free rate plus the risk premium over the period from zero to T, okay? So we'll just do a quick little practice question here. Which of the following does not represent a benefit of holding an asset? A, the convenience yield, B, an optimistic expected outlook for the asset, or C, dividends if the asset is a stock or interest if the asset is a bond? Okay, this is an example of a question where you probably know which ones are uh, right uh, more than perhaps which one is false, okay? So the way that we're looking for the false because it does not represent. So I'd like to turn these into a true or false. So I said, uh, you know, what, what is the benefit of holding an asset? The convenience yield? Yeah, that's true. What is a benefit of holding an asset? A dividend if the, if the asset is a stock? Yeah, 100%. Interest if the asset is a bond? Sure, that's a benefit. So I see A and C are, are true for sure, which means F is false. An optimistic outlook for the asset, is, no, it's not really a benefit. An optimistic forecast for the asset is not a benefit of holding the asset, but it does appear in the valuation of the asset as a high expected price at the horizon date. Uh, convenience yields and dividends and interest, there are, those are real measurable benefits of uh, holding the asset. So a nice little question there, you're looking for the false, turn them into true or false questions, okay? So continue with fundamental concepts of derivative pricing, now we're going to look at the principle of arbitrage. Derivatives pricing is based on a no arbitrage condition, the law of one price. When arbitrage opportunities exist, traders exploit them very quickly. The combined actions of many traders engaging in the same transaction of buying low-priced asset or portfolio and selling the high-priced asset or portfolio results in increased demand and an increasing price for the former and decreased demand and a decreasing price for the latter. This market activity will continue until the prices converge. Assets that produce identical results can thus have only one true market price. This rule is called the law of one price. With virtually all market participants alert for the possibility of earning such profits at no risk, it should, be not, it should not be surprising that arbitrage opportunities are rare. So remember, we've seen that in a previous LOS, the definition of arbitrage. It's not only uh, profits at no risk, but it's also profits at no risk and no capital outlay. Don't forget that last little point. Now we're moving on to arbitrage and replication. Because an asset and a derivative on the asset can be combined to produce a position equivalent to a risk-free bond, it follows that the asset and the risk-free asset can be combined to produce the derivative. So here's the replication of different assets. Assets plus derivative equals the risk-free asset. So you just do the algebra asset minus the risk-free asset equals a negative derivative, short on the derivative. And the derivative minus the risk-free asset equals the negative asset, which means you're short on the asset. So we'll just finish this LOS with one last quick practice question. Which of the following is a limit to arbitrage? A, clearing houses restrict the transactions that can be arbitraged. B, pricing models do not show whether to buy or sell the derivative. Or C, it may not always be possible to raise sufficient capital to engage in arbitrage. Okay, this is an interesting question to end on. Um, the correct answer is C. It says it may not always be possible to raise sufficient capital to gain an arbitrage. But that goes a little bit against the definition of arbitrage, where you say you can earn uh, riskless profits with no net capital outlay. Anyhow, clearing houses do not restrict arbitrage. Pricing models show what the price of the derivative should be. 
Thus, comparison with the market price will indicate if the derivative is overpriced and should be sold, uh, or if it is underpriced and it should be purchased. Anyway, I'm just going to show you two spots in the ebook next to finish this LOS and show you that's why you need to pay attention to certain details. Okay, here I am taking a screenshot of the ebook and I've got, I'm in the glossary and there's the definition for arbitrage, which is the simultaneous purchase of an undervalued asset or portfolio and sale of an overvalued but equal, equivalent asset or portfolio in order to obtain a riskless profit on the price differential, taking advantage of a market inefficiency in a risk-free manner. Uh, so number two, the condition in a financial market in which equivalent assets or a combination of assets sells for two different prices, creating opportunity to profit at no risk and with no commitment of money. In a well-functioning financial market, few arbitrage opportunities are possible. So three, here's the definition, a risk-free operation that earns an expected positive net profit but requires no net investment of money. So we can see twice in the definition, it's talking about uh, no, uh, uh, no net investment of money, okay? And uh, no commitment of money. So now I'm in the ebook for the uh, chapter on derivatives, the basics of derivative pricing and valuation. You can see I'm in the blue box example where I got the question, which of the following is a limit to arbitrage? Clearing houses restrict the transactions that can be arbitraged. Pricing models do not show whether to buy or sell, or C, it may not always be possible to raise sufficient capital to engage in arbitrage. Well, wait a minute, the definition of arbitrage is talking about no net capital outlay. So, uh, you know, why is it difficult to raise sufficient capital when there's no net capital outlay? Nevertheless, that's the solution here. It says C is correct. It may not always be possible to raise sufficient capital to engage in the arbitrage, okay? So that's why I said you just need to be a little bit careful when you're going through the reading and picking up on some of these uh, discrepancies. I probably would have guessed that A is the correct answer, thinking to myself, well, probably there's some transactions that uh, can't be done, and that's a limit to the arbitrage. It just can't be done. This, the, the product or the service is not available, okay? But in this case, as according to the text, uh, C was correct. So that's just, again, the importance of kind of combing through the text uh, after you've done some reviews, after you've done some practice questions. Now listen, no one's going to get perfect on the exam. You're shooting for over 70. If something comes up like this that uh, you know, you're not exactly sure on the reason why, uh, don't beat yourself up on it. Just make sure that you get over 70. And that's the last for this LOS. Thank you.